hope uh, you are doing well. I'm excited for uh, uh just to uh, be with all of you. Let me know if you can hear me on tonight. Uh, just a couple of thoughts uh, that I wanted to uh, wanted to share with you. Good evening. I'm just uh, getting back in from uh, London and wanted to uh, jump on before I crashed and get ready for church. Uh, so I need you all to share this and share it as quickly as you can. Uh, tonight is going to be compelling. It's going to be intriguing. And at some levels, it may be controversial. I... Uh, was thinking about it. I had too much time on the plane uh, to think seven hours and 45 minutes and uh, what it is a hey, brother from Jessup bless you welcome home uh, I was thinking about this for seven hours and 45 minutes so much so uh, that I'm thinking about writing a book about it and uh, I wanted to bounce it off you all, my family, first to get you all's thoughts, uh, reactions, and feelings on it. Uh, before I jump in, ask that you will uh, please uh, share this message. Uh, those of you who are on Periscope, press those three buttons. Those of you who are on Facebook, ask that you'll please uh, do the exact same. Uh, but I want uh, you to share it. I'm not going to keep you long. I'm tired. I got jet lag, but I got to get this off my chest. I love you too. Uh, here's what I was uh, thinking. I was thinking uh, how the church has consistently and persistently dropped the ball dropped the ball and missed a major opportunity. Many of you jumped on because you saw the title of it and I wanted to give you some backdrop. In case you didn't know, uh, Malcolm X, name before his conversion was Malcolm Little. Uh, his father name was Earl Little and his father was a uh, activist, conscientious Baptist preacher. Uh, out of Michigan, who was also a Garveyite. Uh, Garveyites are uh, those who uh, uh, ascribe to the power of the diaspora in understanding the strength of uh, black dollars and realizing that we had to, in fact, fortify our home base, which is the mother continent. Malcolm X's father, Earl Little, September 27th, 1931, was struck down by uh, a streetcar and uh, was taken to the hospital that was slow to give him aid and assistance because he was a black man and this is the height of segregation. He died and Malcolm X was eternally scarred because he firsthand witnessed the treatment of somebody that he looked up to. He went into a life of crime as is chronicled in the autobiography of Malcolm X co-written by uh, Alex Haley that took him to a precipitous downward slope and he found himself doing any number of things from numbers running uh, and everything in between. And here's what dawned on me. When Malcolm X's father died as a Baptist pastor in Michigan, what other pastors in that city stepped up and said, your father's gone, but I'm going to be that male role model for you? I'll be that presence. Got to ask the question, albeit rhetorically, when the pastor died, Pastor Earl Little, where were all of the members of the church who just love him pastor 
And now that pastor is no more, nobody takes a moment to put their hand on the son. So he goes into prison. When he goes into prison, he's introduced to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and as a consequence, the nation of Islam. He comes out, has access and exposure, and immediately has uh, a connection. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad who takes him in, mentors him, tutors him, and then uh, grooms him to be a voice for our people. I shudder to think because never once in all of these years have I ever heard it raised or argued. What would have happened if the body of Christ had made that same level of investment? Identified and recognized that same level of gifting. Who in the world would Malcolm X or Malcolm Little have been for the body of Christ? Regrettably, so many of us love Paul and we quote him, but we don't know what to do with Saul. So people like you after you've transitioned, but can't handle you while you're in process. It is, isn't it amazing that one of the greatest evangelical pruning grounds for the nation of Islam is in fact the largest church in the world which is the prison industrial complex. Nobody has really done a critical analysis as to why it is that the nation of Islam is 80% men and the church is 80% women. Where are we missing it? How is it that we do a hundred men in black, put old deacons on the, on the front row, whatever young men come in, we immediately place them as armor bearers and security, but never groom them for discipleship and for leadership. How is it that we don't even see the blood dripping from our hands and how many nameless and faceless Malcolms did we have within our grasp and we never reached out for them. We like them while they play in the drums. It's great when they're sitting in the balcony. But when they hit from 21 to 50, we don't know what to do with them. So as a consequence, Men don't feel comfortable or drawn to our houses of worship because nobody's really teaching them. Nobody's really ushering them. Nobody's really mentoring them. I've been thinking about it for the last two months and as a consequence, I told my church, no more men's day. I'm sick of it. It, it, It's really just a perfunctory exercise And we're recycling the same men on the program, singing the same songs, but not really doing the outreach. So tomorrow, I'm not having Men's Day. I'm having Reentry Sunday. We've never done it before. And I'm sharing it with you because I want other pastors, every church, other churches to take this template and this model and do something for these men who are coming out of the prison pipeline and they have nothing reaching out to them, but the Islamic community and the street element and the church is silent. And so tomorrow at our church, I'm doing through the entire day, several things. On Sunday morning in the middle of worship, I'm doing expungement of records. Representatives from the state's attorney's office will be at our church and we're doing expungement of records because you need to have another chance, a refresh button, another opportunity. I'm having businesses come to our our congregation tomorrow who are open 
to hiring returning citizens so that they don't have to lie on the application just to feed their family. I've got barbers coming tomorrow. The barbers are coming tomorrow to cut the returning citizens' hair for free. I don't care how long they're there. Uh, we paying for it. It's not going to charge you absolutely anything. First Sunday of October, I told my church I wanted to collect 3,000 neckties because I want our brothers, our sons, our husbands, our fathers to be dressed for success. By the grace of God, we just reached that benchmark to collect 3,000 neckties to get them ready for job interviews and job preparedness. I was blown away because I thought I was really doing something by collecting 3,000 neckties. I did a Periscope like this one, did a Facebook Live like this one, sharing what was my vision. And a company from New York watched this video and said, Pastor Bryant, that's great that you've given neckties, but that's not enough. So right now, I've got two trucks driving up from New York so that every ex-offender who walks in my church tomorrow is not just getting a tie, but we're putting them in new suits. Not only are we doing that, I'm telling you, we're doing the full gamut of wholeness. Chesapeake Urological is partnering with us tomorrow. Chesapeake Urological is doing free prostate exams for our fathers and our brothers and our husbands who are over 40 because regrettably and embarrassingly too many of our black men don't take care of their health, don't take care of their temple. And so we've got to do something. We're also opening up tomorrow educational opportunities for men who are coming back home, who want to, in fact, expand their horizons and don't have the means and the resources to do it. So I jumped on tonight because I got programs from all over the state of Maryland coming to my church tomorrow. And I got resources for 3,000 returning citizens, not three, not 30, not 300. I want to service 3,000 returning citizens tomorrow. I got enough ties and suits for all of them. And so what I'm asking you to do is I need you to get on your phone. I want you to go on social media uh, and direct every uh, returning citizen, every man you can to Empowerment Temple. I've got three services tomorrow. 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30. It's going to be absolutely insane. I'm going to be streaming live tomorrow behind the scenes uh, so that you can see these brothers start a new chapter of their life and start all over again. Because I have no idea that one of the men who are getting a haircut, one of the men who are getting a job, one of the men who are getting their records expunged. One of the men who may be putting on a tie and a suit for the first time could be this generation's Malcolm X. And I don't want him ever to say that no church in Baltimore and no pastor ever gave him a chance and never gave him an opportunity. In the words of the Migos, I wish I had a scripture, but in the words of the Migos, we got to walk it like we talk it. And if we're not doing that, then we really aren't serious about kingdom business. So do me a favor tonight, please. Would you share this message with as many people as you possibly can? Because I have no idea whose life is going to be impacted, who's going to be equipped, and who's going to be empowered. And I want your sons to be there. Yes, in Maryland. I want your sons to be there because I want them to hear the testimony of men who forthrightly will say they wish 
They had access to these opportunities before they got swallowed whole in the street. I'm grateful to be able to serve. I don't minimize shouting and worshiping and singing, but I'm telling you, Frederick Douglass said it best. I got more prayers answered when I got off my knees. Let's do the work. A community is watching. Men are watching. Our children are watching. I'm sick of turning to our neighbor if we're not going to be able to empower our neighbor. Have a great night. Look to see you tomorrow. I'll be broadcasting live all three services, 730, 930, 1130. I'll. Peace.